guys, welcome to the Everett Silver Show. We have excited guests as we do every week. And so I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm always bringing it to you. So thanks so much for staying in tune with us. Stay connected. You're watching the Everett Silver Show. Hello, Hi, Everett. Are we ready? Here, Ron, Andre, thank you guys for doing the show, man. What a pleasure to have you. Yeah, thanks oh, thank for having you us. Yeah. Well, folks, uh, I'm trying to tell you, man, uh, everybody's talking about Vampire Academy, man. Uh, the international best-selling book series also created minds behind Julie Plek, uh, Vampire Diaries. Some of you may remember that. But there's a new television series streaming exclusively on Peacock, and again, it's Vampire Academy. I have two of the stars, Kieran Moore, also Andre De Kim is with us, and so... I guess let's talk about this uh, exciting show, man, because, uh, you know, story of friendship, romance, and danger. Uh, and I guess, uh, Kieran, I'll start with you, man. You, you play, uh, what, Dimitri? Dimitri Belikov, yes. Yeah, that's who I play. And that, I love the way you explain that. <laughs> romance, love, and it's just like, all the ingredients of something sexy, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's too funny, man. Now, well, just talk about because I saw some of the um, fellas, man. It's very intense. Uh, you know, right, Andre? You, know, you play Christian, I think. It's very intense, man. Yeah, it, it is very intense. And, and there's like a lot of, uh, I think the show has, it throws a lot at you uh, in the beginning. And it's like, it's very, it keeps you captivated and interesting. And there's a lot of intensity. And there's a lot of intensity filming, too, yeah, this, yeah. this kind of show. But um, it's also just a great experience in, in general, too. Well, when you talk about just, I guess, uh, the, you know, you live in this society, you're trying to complete their education between these two powerful different women who have different things. One is a powerful royalty, the other half is a half vampire and guardian. And with that being said, um, you know, uh, Kieran, you play a model guardian. guardian. What, what does his character do? Um, so I protect the royal moor and through experience on the field, I'm pretty well decorated. Um, not that I think Dimitri takes pride in that. I think Dimitri does what he does because he has to do it. It's all he's ever known, which is an interesting point to meet a person, um, especially when you throw in front of him uh, a young, fiery woman who is all about challenging her role in society, you know, um, which is which is beautiful. It's, it's exhilarating. Um, it's just this journey of self-discovery for Dimitri, I think. Um, whilst his world gets turned upside down and tries to cling to everything he knows, he's forced upon a world that he doesn't know and has to, to sort of um evolve with and i think that's sort of every character in its own way has to evolve through this story like the sto the circumstances are high, the, the stakes are high the circumstances yeah. are happening to us all mm -hmm. um everyone's world's changing and not necessarily for the better um it's true yeah and then uh uh andre you play christian but a thoughtful intelligent type of royal empire talk about that from that perspective Oh, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, Christian is a little bit of an outcast as well, but he is part of the mm -hmm. Royal Malloy, so he has a lot of privileges that a lot of people don't have. He's also part of the the, the ruling families. There's like 12 ruling families, and his family uh, is a part of that, but he's specifically outcasted because of the actions of his parents when he was younger. So playing a character like that is, is you know, it was almost a dream and, and like a... Uh, also just very like a complex layered character to play so it was like as an actor that was a big dream for him and obviously he does have that relationship with Lissa and I think he really I think Christian personally I think Christian views Lissa really as like this this, this ray of light this ray of hope someone that like shows him that like this world can be much different than what it is and at the same time I, I think he's just completely mesmerized by her mm -hmm. in a lot of ways too like he's like who are you there's a lot of references right. that he gets to show where he he refers to her as like a unicorn as well and i think like that is a perfect way for him to describe her like she really is this mythical creature that like nobody gets to see this rarity and he's just so so mesmerized by her and that relationship gets to like go further and deepen uh even more throughout the season so like it it was a it was a lovely honor to play as well <laughs> Well, I tell you, man, yeah, the threat of just tearing the society apart, man, is, you know, also, also at stake. Now, we've got to let everybody know Vampire Academy streams exclusively, I believe, on Peacock beginning Thursday, September the 15th. And then i give you both any last-minute things you want to say just to promote the show. And what a pleasure to have you guys, man. Oh, thank you. Um, I would just say, hey, it comes out on the 15th on Peacock, like you <laughs> said, and uh, go watch it. I think I would say, even if you don't <laughs> – yeah, go watch it. Um, even if you don't think this is your show. 
give it a try because there's bits in this for everyone. I think you'll be surprised. It's much more than a vampire show. Um, and that is it really my, is, man. Because a lot of people don't realize yeah, it's, 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 it's my like reel you in. I'll try with mysterious. It's more than a vampire. So much <laughs> Use that instead. <laughs> well, he's right, but he's right though, man. You know, so it, it is. It is something going to keep you glued to the set, man. Very interesting dialogues there. But again, what a pleasure, pleasure to have again, uh, Kieran Moore, and also Andre De Kim. Now, guys, thanks so much again. Our, uh, Vampire Academy streaming exclusively Peacock beginning Thursday, September fifteenth. Guys, thanks for doing the show. Well, guys, uh, thanks so much for tuning into the Everett Silver Show. Stay tuned. Don't turn that dial because we got more exciting guests right here on the Everett Silver Show. Be back in a moment. Hello, Everett. Dr. Kenny, how you doing, sir? I'm well, how are you? Man, I can't complain. Thanks so much for doing the show. What a privilege to have you, man. Oh, it's a privilege to, to be in conversation. Well, we got to talk about uh, Magnolia Flower, man. I tell you, everybody's excited about it, man. And just talk about your creativity behind it. Because I know, uh, man, it's uh, you're talking about um, from uh, the African-American uh, type of floor. Uh, folk, folklore. So talk about this, man. Of course. So yeah, Zora Neale Hurston, who is known as the genius of the South, one of the greatest writers in, in, in history, who's most known for their eyes were watching God and uh, being one of the leading lights of the Harlem Renaissance, wrote this short story called Magnolia Flower in 1925. And so I adapted it for children. It's, and it's at its core, a love story, a love story told from a river to a brook and and i just hmm. am excited to to convey it to children well i tell you man new york uh, times number one best-selling author man and you're leading the anti-racist scholar but i want everybody to know dr uh ibram x kendi is with us but when we talk about man just reimagining this type of classic piece that you got uh man just talk about just the journey of how a brave you know one can be from you know from one's heart man well, I, I just think first and foremost that the, the the journey in many ways for me was 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 I was inspired to adapt Magnolia Flower because I wanted our children to be able to learn about and be introduced to and even parents to be introduced to Zora Neale Hurston, you know, just this incredibly important Southern uh, black writer who really uh, cherished uh, and revealed the lives of, of Southern Black folks at a time when, when they were not being appreciated nationally. Right. And so to right. be able to expose my 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 children to to Zora is through Magnolia Flower is is truly a dream come true. Doctor Kennedy, talk about how important it is because man, I'm always always kind of you know intrigued by just your creativeness, but talk about if we reach kids kind of young, uh, early, do you think we can get a grip on stuff early on? Without question. In, in many ways, if we think about anti-racist or being anti-racist or anti-racist mm -hmm. ideas of racial equality as a language, mm -hmm. when is it easiest to teach people a language? <laughs> when they're very young, right. right? It's much harder when they're older. And, and so that's why I'm excited to, to be introducing books like, like Magnolia Flower to, to young people. Because, yeah, you know, I think sometimes uh, we, we I, I won't necessarily say, you know, we've, we've got a lot of more work to do, but I, I will say that, you know, we've got to continue to bring it to the forefront and what creative way you've done it through the form of reading. But just talk about just the research that you put in it and what type of things from our intellect you're trying to accomplish. Well, of course, I'm, you know, at my, at my core, I'm a scholar, you know, at my core, I'm a researcher. Yeah. And right. to me, when we're speaking about particularly a topic as serious as, as racism, as aspirational as, as racial equality and equity, we should be speaking from the research. And, and, and so I try to do that, you know, with all of my work. And, and that's why even with Magnolia Flower, at the end, we have an author's note and an historical note so people can sort of understand the context and even the research behind this story. 
Now, I got to ask you lastly, the, the, the title itself, Magnolia Flower, what's the significance in that? So Magnolia Flower is an Afro-Indigenous girl and her parents, uh, Bentley and Swift Deer, uh, named her Magnolia Flower. Mm. And she came, according to the book, at the times when the flowers were blooming. And, and mm. so in many ways, she sort of was symbolic of really the blooming of freedom, as you're going to see in this, in this text. The, 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 the narrative starts during the enslavement era and transfers to the end of the Civil War and the blooming of freedom through someone like a magnolia flower. Man, I tell you, I just always uh, moved by you guys. Um, <clears throat> just, just your creative, you know, imagination of your, your, where, where you come from, man. And then any last minute things. I want everybody to know Magnolia Flower is available uh, uh, September sixth, wherever books are sold. And uh, Dr. E Ibram uh, X. Kendi has been with us today. And any last minute, Dr. Kendi, that you want to say, uh, man, I, I'm excited about what you're doing. Well, I'm, I'm just excited to 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 be sharing this this book, especially in this difficult time. I think we as as caregivers and parents and, and teachers may not recognize how difficult it is for our children. If we're worried, you know, our, our children are hearing that and feeling that. And so I think uplifting, joyful love stories like Magnolia Flower are really helpful for children in this time. Well, again, I want to just well, much success to you. I know Time Magazine did it right and they got it right, named you one of the most influential you know, to the people in the world. So uh, again, folks, Dr. Uh, Ibram X. Kendi has been with us. Make sure you go and get Magnolia File. You don't, you won't be disappointed. I'm telling you, it's something to, for the reader's imagination. And thank you so much, Dr. Kendi, for doing the show. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. More guests coming your way. Don't touch that dial. I'll be back in a moment. is with us. September is uh, Sexual Health Awareness Month, and OBGYN and host of Women's Health Podcast, Dr. Jackie's Point of View. Dr. Jackie uh, Jacqueline Walters, also known as Dr. Jackie, is here to kind of clip some of the myths and also misconceptions of the subject uh, and to empower women to speak up and ask the right questions and get facts about, you know, on take, taking charge of their body. So again, a pleasant good morning to you, Dr. Jackie. What is one of the biggest misconceptions you hear about about women's sexual health? Absolutely, and thank you for having me. One of the biggest misconceptions ever that I get, is, and we need to get rid of it, is that the vagina should smell like flowers and fruit. That's so not true. The vagina has its own natural odor. A pH in the vagina should be about 3.8 to 4.5, and I can tell you, if you disrupt that pH, you'll get a strong or an unusual odor. Now, if women find themselves with a strong or an unusual odor, one of my favorite products is Refresh Odor Eliminating Gel. And if you're asking, well, what could disrupt my pH? Sex is one of the biggest disruptors of the pH. Wow, that's something. I talk about other misconceptions you, you regularly hear. Yeah, another real big misconception is the vagina's unclean. The vagina is actually cleaner than the mouth. Now, I'm going to tell you, thinking the vagina is unclean or unhealthy is not true. The vagina has its own self-cleaning mechanism. I call it a, like a self-cleaning oven. Now, you can definitely add by using warm water and a warm cloth, but you don't need harsh chemicals or perfumes or body soap. Now, uh, Dr. Jackie, how can women kind of take charge of their sexual health? Everett, you've heard it. Knowledge is power. And I tell women, increase your VQ, your vaginal IQ. And when you do that, you have more confidence, you have less fear. It will allow you an open and honest conversation with your OBGYN. Now, I do encourage women to find a doctor that they can talk to and ask all the hard questions or questions that make them ashamed, but a doctor who will listen to you, give you their full attention. And, you know, we call ourselves the Olivia Pope of the vagina. We take care of all the right. problems of the <laughs> vagina. <laughs> and Everett, the vaginas <laughs> will thank you later. <laughs> but Dr. Jackie, talk about though. What are some of those questions patients should? I guess you wish they, they would that ask their sex for sexual health. 
Right. The one in particular I like women to ask, and I encourage women to ask, is about vaginal discomfort, especially after sex. You know, itching and burning after sex is not normal. If you do experience itching and burning after sex, I do recommend Refresh Cooling Relief Spray ever in a cup of pss, pss, and the vagina's calm. <laughs> I tell you, yeah, all this is great information. There any last minute things you want to share? And we need to know where to go for further information as well. Right, and absolutely. To increase that VQ, go to Refresh.com. There are lots of resources there to answer some of those questions that you may have forgotten to ask your doctor or you were just too shy to ask the doctor. And then Everett, there are a lot of videos where I'm there answering some of those questions. I tell you, what a pleasure to have Dr. Jackie. I tell you, just so much information and always a pleasure because you're always bringing some good information. So thank you for doing the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me and stay safe. All right, you too. Bye -bye. More guests coming your way. Don't touch that dial. I'll be back in a moment. Angela, Chris, what a pleasure to have you on the show, and thanks for doing it. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, folks, Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, 10th anniversary celebration, and I tell you, I've caught up with creator and also executive producer Angela uh, Santamara is here with us. Also supervising producer Chris Loggins is here with us about, you know, Fred Rogers Productions, beloved Emmy-winning uh, PBS Kids series. But I got to tell you guys, before I start, who didn't love Mr. Rogers, right? <laughs> love, 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 Everybody. love. Especially here in Pittsburgh, where I am. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> well, folks, we got to talk about it because I, I do know, you know, from the groundbreaking Daniel Tiger's neighborhood, you know, it's, it's this number one animated series uh, for preschoolers. So we got to talk about it. And so, with that being said, though, Anza, you, you actually has just been, you know, just producing, you know, God knows. Uh, Daniel's Tiger Neighborhood. We mentioned Blues Clues, who I used to love, and you know all these things. What make what makes it keep coming back strong for you to do this type of stuff? You know, kids. I, I was in the classroom with preschoolers in the early early days. I have a master's in child developmental psychology, and so I always want to use media to inspire kids. And I was the one who was inspired by Mr. Rogers, and so the idea to give back has always been something that I wanted to do. Even with Blue's Clues, I talked a lot about the formal features of what Fred taught us about preschoolers and learning through media. And so the opportunity to do Daniel was just a ridiculous honor. And so continued to want to put those nods of love in it and talk to the kids about those amazing socio-emotional lessons that Fred, I feel, taught me and millions of kids like me. Chris, you've been producing stuff for a while, but you, I understand that you're overseeing all the aspects of production. Talk about this 10th anniversary celebration that you have to put together working with all the partners. Well, yes, it's been 10 years, and it's been a great 10 years filled with uh, love and care and attention that has gone into every single episode. Uh, I work closely with Angela and her team um, to craft all of these stories. We're so fortunate um, to work with Angela and have the success that we've had with the show. Um, we wouldn't be on the air for 10 years if, if people weren't watching. So we thank the fans, the, uh, the kids, parents, and caregivers who are choosing to watch our stories. But uh, it has been uh, a, a labor of love for these 10 years. And, and with the 10th anniversary of the sixth season, uh, we just kicked things off with new episodes this week. Uh, we had a movie that premiered, a movie event on PBS Kids in the summer where Daniel went to a brand new neighborhood and met his friend Juan Carlos. And we have lots of uh, new experiences and, and new stories geared up for season six. So uh, we're excited. Well, I got to tell you, uh, Angela, when I, I look back over, like I said, your career, just being able to just find the content or being creative, even from the long time, you know, you, you've got, like I said, shows from beyond. What made you so interested in just trying to create something creative that the kids can learn and the way they watch TV, I should say? a great question and first of all I don't feel that old but yes <laughs> I've been doing it for a long time um, you know I really always wanted to inspire kids I feel so strongly 
the preschoolers are the smartest little human beings and the more respect we can give them and the more cognitive and socio-emotional tools that they can have, the better that their self-worth and their ability to believe they can do anything that they want to do at this age um, is so important. And so that idea that we can create these little life lessons for Daniel Tiger that, you know, Fred would say what's mentionable is manageable. And we love to talk about, you know, when you have these big feelings, you can sing about them, you know, like there are ways that you can use them as a tool to help you um, in so many as you explore life and as you figure things out on your own. So I just think I, I love kids. I've always been around kids and it's always been just something I've been passionate about from the beginning. And it's all about the team, right? Finding people who get you and want, are, as, are as passionate about this is what makes all the difference. And I believe that's why we're here 10 years later. And Chris, you got to have the job of a lifetime. What is it like working with uh, the likes of Angela, then you with the Fred Rogers production? What is it like, man? It's a wonderful job. I mean, I, I love what I do. I think everybody who works on Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood loves what they do, and that shows up on the screen. Um, and uh, I was saying we have a, a board here at Fred Rogers Productions where we put up all of the letters and posts and notes that we receive from kids, uh, parents, and caregivers that are watching the show and what it means to them, how they're using it in their life. And that's the most rewarding experience for me working on the show is hearing from people who watch the show and, and what it means to them. And uh, we'll get some letters that uh, are deep and, and meaningful. And uh, oftentimes uh, we hear from people who are using the show in surprising ways. And um, that never gets old. Well, I want to tell everybody again, uh, Daniel Tigo's Neighborhood 10th Anniversary Celebration, I believe it began September 3rd with special top 10 Tiger Tales Marathon on PBS Season 6. Premieres also uh, September the 5th on PBS, also available to stream to PBS Kids. So check your local listings. What a wonderful privilege to have uh, Angela uh, Santamero and also supervisor and producer Chris Loggins because when you have the creator like Angela, I mean, guys, thanks for doing the show. What a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much. More guests coming your way. Don't touch that dial. I'll be back in a moment. Hi, Everett. How are you? Amanda, thank you so much for doing the show. Pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for having me. Well, folks, my guest with us, how to prepare your new teen driver. you got to learn more about safety, driving tips off for teens, and our parents can uh, save money on car insurance for their young driver. I mean, I need to know that myself, so, man, I'm excited about talking to Amanda. Mustro is here with us, parenting and also lifestyle experts. So with that being said, Amanda, why are teens considered high-risk drivers? You know, when we look at teen drivers and we compare them with drivers of all different ages, unfortunately, our teens, well, they're not the best of drivers, but it really isn't their fault. It, it really comes down to they are inexperienced. They don't have the time and the miles behind the wheel. And one study even found that drivers between the ages of 15 and 20, they are 33% more likely to be in a fatal car crash. So that's a really startling statistic for parents. So it really shows that we need to give our kids the time to get behind the wheel and learn those basic driving skills and also to learn the laws in the state where they're driving. So one tip I love sharing with parents, I've heard this from other parents, definitely going to use this with my three kids, is a parent teen driver contract. What that is, is a contract between you and your teen, where you talk about everything from cell phone use, from speeding, from who's allowed in their car and who isn't allowed in the car, and also their curfew and the importance of not drinking and driving. And if they ever need help or they don't feel safe, they could always reach out to you. It's really about opening up that communication right from the beginning. And then, uh, Amanda, can you tell us, uh, I guess, a few safe driving tips for teens? Sure, from avoiding distractions like your cell phone. But, you know, for teens, it can also be having a whole bunch of friends in your car or, you know, playing the music really loud and, and just taking your focus off of the road. Also, watching your speed. You know, a lot of accidents for teens happen at night or early in the morning. So you want to make sure no matter what time of day it is that you're watching your speed. And even down to the shoes that they wear. So this is something that a teen probably isn't thinking about. but 
you know, I love a high heel. I love a flip flop, but those are not the best shoes for driving. So those are all things that they can think about before they get behind the wheel. Amanda, tell us why do uh, team drivers need car insurance? I know that's that's big. Right. So in most states, car insurance is is required for all drivers. So you're going to add them to your policy. And that means your rates are going to go up. And that's because teen drivers are, you know, less experienced. But, you know, a little bit of, a, you know, a hopeful looking to the future, their rates do go down when they're 25. So if you are looking to lower your insurance now, my recommendation is to head over to autoinsurance.com slash teens. It is a great resource for helping parents figure out how to lower the cost of their insurance when they're adding on their teen driver. And they have lots of tips and tricks to do this. And also you could even call their hotline where you can get connected with their perfect policy connectors. These are experts who know how to create policies from different companies that work for you and your family and your budget. It's just a great way to look at a bunch of different policies and figure out what works best for you. So, you know, I'm a big fan of finding any way to save money. Plus on that website, you can even find templates for those parent teen driver contracts. So, you know, again, anything that makes my life a little bit easier, I'm a big fan of. I tell you, that is wonderful. Again, guys, uh, autoinsurance.com forward slash teens. If you want to go for further information, Amanda Mustro, parenting and also lifestyle expert has been with us. Amanda, thanks so much for doing the show. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. <music> Back and watch.